It's Heather Morano, the Mary Spinster. I'm here to show you really quickly um, how to do eco printing on a scarf. I'm selling these kits on my website and you're gonna get a collection of items in the mail and you can do this at home. So you're gonna get three botanicals, um, actually four. I'm gonna send you calendula flower, which is this one right here, uh, hibiscus flower. Um, the calendula is gonna give you like a red, orange, yellow color. The hibiscus will give you anywhere from red to deep purples. And I'm also going to send you matter root, which is going to give you deep reds. And the final thing I'm going to send you, which I don't have right here, is cochineal, which is a scale insect, believe it or not, but it gives you a hot pink uh, vibrant color wherever you put it. So today I'm going to demonstrate really quickly how to lay out your botanicals and do this project. It's super easy. I'm going to send you a uh, silk scarf. This scarf has already been treated and it's ready for dyeing for you. So it's been scoured and it's been mordanted. So all you need to do is place your botanicals and follow this super easy instruction kit that I'm going to send uh, with your materials. So first thing we're going to do is decide where we want to put our botanicals. And I have a few extra things here too. These are flowers that I got, I picked out from my garden that I grow for dye purposes. This is uh, Tango Cosmos, uh, bright red and, and orange colors. And so we're gonna put those fresh on there. This is Black Knight Scabiosa, which is such a deep dark purple that it looks black. Um, so I'm gonna experiment with those on here. And the other thing I did was I collected a couple of leaves from one of my Japanese maples and I'm gonna put those down too. So, super easy and it's, completely up to you. Everything will be, um, every piece you do will be unique because unless you measure everything you, where you're going to put it, everything's going to be slightly different every time you do it. So I'm going to start with my uh, hibiscus flower. What we're going to do is you lay your scarf out flat and you're just going to cover the bottom half of the, the half closest to you because then we're going to do some folding. So I think what I'm going to do is start at the bottom edge, since hibiscus flower uh, lends a very dark purple and it actually colors the, the water as well, because you know if you've ever had hibiscus tea, that's the color. Um, I think I want the bottom ends of my scarf to be purple. Then I'm gonna lay down some matter. I'm just gonna sprinkle it. This is matter root. It's a really pretty plant. Um, and then you, uh, you grow the plant for a couple of years and you pull it up and grind up the roots and that's how you get this matter root. All right, and some calendula flower. So this is gonna be, the middle of my scarf is gonna have light colors to it. Yellow, orange. And now I'm gonna lay my scabiosa. This is just an experiment. I haven't used this one yet. So I'm just gonna lay the flower face down. It's okay if it has the stem still on it because maybe the stem will take as well and we'll see the stem um, on the scarf. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the Tango Cosmos. Just lay them down like that. Okay, so uh, also my, my leaves from a Japanese maple. So you can do this however you like. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's all up to your um, artistic sensibility. So now we're going to fold the top part over. Now we're making a sandwich basically. And then they're going to come to one end and we're going to roll. Roll the whole thing up, flowers and all. And don't worry if you're squashing things, that's normal. So we're going to get a nice long roll. It's going to become what we call our bundle. Now you have a couple of options with the bundle. You can steam it in a pot um, for a minimum of an hour. The longer you keep uh, the plant materials exposed to the heat and the water, the deeper they're going to set. Um, 
So you can do the pot method, which is steaming, which I talk about in the instruction booklet, or you can do the mason jar method. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Both preparations for the bundle are the same. So you rolled up your bundle, now you're gonna take the two rubber bands that I've given you, and just tie those off. This basically just keeps it from unrolling and keeps any botanicals from falling out. So I'm gonna do the mason jar method. So I just take a mason jar, I put my bundle inside, shove it down, whatever you wanna do. And then I grab my boiling water that's just boiled. You might be able to see the steam rising. Might have to add a little bit more here, but. So you cover your bundle with your boiling water or just boiled water. I just ran out, but that's okay. Um, Cause I actually don't even have any botanicals at the very top. So you put your lid on. I would fill it, try to cover your, your bundle. Leave this for 24 hours. You can take it out earlier, but remember the longer you leave it, the deeper the dyes are gonna be. So here's one I did the other day using all of those botanicals. And you can see the bright orange from the, from the Tango Cosmos, the yellow from the, uh, the Calendula, the purple and the reddish browns from the hibiscus flower and the matter root. So this is, all, this is what you get. When you're done, when your bundle is done or when you want to check it, um, you can look at the watercolor. It will have changed colors a little bit because of the botanicals inside. But I would say 24 hours. Then you take it out, unwrap it, shake out all of the um, botanicals, rinse it in cool water and let it dry. Silk dries super fast. So you'll have your completed silk scarf before you know it. Again, these kits are available on my website um, and you can uh, get them um, through the uh, pop-up fair virtual portal as well. So make sure you check there. And in addition to that, I am selling seeds for the Scabiosa, the Black Knight Scabiosa, and the Tango Cosmos. Super easy to grow. Um, all you need to do is in the spring after your first frost, after your last frost has passed, sow them in a pot. I grow mine a big pot on the porch. You sow them uh, on the top of the soil, sprinkle a little bit of potting soil on top, and let it go. And then in a couple of weeks, you'll see some sprouts. And you'll have some, you'll have flowers like these all summer long. All you need to do is keep deadheading, remove all the ones that have expired and they'll keep producing for you. I've had flowers from April, it's now September. So great, uh, great thing to do if you want a really pretty sunny porch. Anyway, those flower seeds are also available on my website. Thank you so much. I hope you learned a lot.